It's time we answer a question on your stock in a little segment we like to call Your Stock, Our Take. Buy, sell, or hold. Well, this was, as Ryan said, this was a question that we received from a, a listener uh, to the show. Uh, Neil is the listener's name. He asked about XRO Technologies, uh, mentioned that they're Calgary based, EV space, coil drive, various companies under NDA, strong board, and partnership with Linamar. He wants to know our take on the company. So I had a look here and I will give you our take on it. So uh, XRO Technologies, they're, they're Canadian listed. They are potentially looking at going to the NASDAQ. It's about a $2 stock right now, $372 million market cap. They IPO'd originally in September of 2020. Uh, right now, just under 170 million shares out. And essentially what they do is they, they, they describe themselves as a company that's part of the uh, electrification and energy transition um, of the of, of the world but essentially they they have two technologies uh two products which are in pre-commercial stage potentially just entering commercial stage one is what they call a coil driver traction inverter uh the second is a cell driver energy storage so the coil driver traction inverter um this is essentially something that will go on to uh, an electric vehicle an ev it it improves the performance uh, the range of the EV, and of course, the cell driver energy storage. Uh, this is all about um, storing energy. So um, certainly two technologies potentially that play well into the electrification and EV themes. Now, there's a few things that I need to, to mention before I really get into this and, and talk about the financials. Ryan told you about the electrification report that we're working on right now. Um, so this is a report that essentially covers all companies listed on North American exchanges that are in some way supporting the electrification theme. So this might be renewable energy, it might be EV, it might be battery technology, um, but even uh, electrical production, because of course the grid will need to, uh, there'll need to be investments in the electrical grid as um, more power transitions potentially from fossil fuels um, to other sources. Um, but if you look, just we're looking specifically right now at XRO, this is a this is a very complicated technology, and I'm not going to pretend that I am an expert in this technology specifically, and I know everything about it. Uh, really, as as an analyst, I cover a multitude of different industries, and you can't be an expert in in every industry. So, if you go to Xro's website, it's a very pretty website. They've got lots of nice graphics and video. Um, they have a fairly extensive extensive corporate presentation that talks a lot about their technology the potential, what their plans are, um, their, what they believe their total addressable market is. Uh, but it's, as I said, it is a very, it is very complicated technology to understand um, and to really get into the potential of it, fully understanding the, the use cases and the competitive landscape, more importantly, that is, that is well beyond the scope of what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to essentially describe how we would approach a company like XRO. Um, so first of all, um, I, I like the idea of potentially transformative technologies, but the first thing that I have to highlight about XRO is that financially, the company really doesn't have anything right now. So if you look at the company's recent quarterly results, they have about 300,000 in revenue. They lost about uh, just under $9 million um, net loss for the quarter. And if you look at the company's uh, full year financial results from, from 2022, uh, revenue of about 2.2 million, and they lost about $40 million for the year. So this is a company with what we would describe as minimal revenue, um, just coming out of pre-revenue, but really for all of effective purposes, this is, this is almost no revenue right now. Um, with their loss in 2022, uh, research and development expense was about 9 million. Uh, and then about 24 to 25 million of payroll consulting and SGNA expense, right? So financially, this is a company that we would still consider to be highly speculative. Uh, a lot of the times when I look at a company like this, I won't even go to the next phase because they really haven't proved a, a business model yet. They really haven't proved the commercial viability of the technology or the product that they're offering. But in this case, I, I think that we're going to go a little bit beyond that because there are a couple of things about this company that I do think make it interesting. 
Um, one of the things I will note is that from a balance sheet perspective, their balance sheet does not look like it's very leveraged. They actually have some net cash, so that's a good thing. Um, but just going on to operations here, um, they they are they have stated that they they plan to start production in Q3 of 2023 um, uh, with a a Calgary based manufacturing facility that has capacity of up to 100,000 coil drivers. Right, so Q3 2023. This is basically now. So they're looking at the current quarter. Um, I did not see an announcement that production has already commenced. Uh, it may have, and they may report that at the end of the quarter. Right now, I'm uncertain of that right now. But at the very, at the very least, um, this is a situation where we should start to see the commercial viability of their technology over the next several quarters here. If they're starting production right now, um, we will get an update likely on this uh, at the end of Q3 when the Q3 report comes out. Um, likely, the first quarter production is going to be fairly minimal. But what we would want to see and what we would want to look for is that production is starting to ramp up. And as they're producing, um, they're, they're entering into that commercial phase. You're starting to then get some feedback on what the market reception to their technology is. Now, another thing that I found interesting about the company was uh, a deal that they signed with Linamar, which is a, a major auto parts manufacturing company. Um, they announced this in May of this year. And essentially, this is an agreement with Linamar um, to produce and commercialize their integrated electric beam axle product. Um, so this, this agreement is set for an initial five-year term. I have some excerpts from the company's press release on this. Uh, it is subject to successful continu continual, continued testing and validation by Linamar. Um, and product samples are expected to be delivered in, in or were delivered in Q4 of 2022, rather. So the idea here is that the company is targeting um, to build up to 25,000 units per year uh, for Linamar per annum by 2027. So this potentially could be a very significant deal um, for XRO. And again, this is a situation where, uh, according to this agreement, um, this will essentially begin in Q4 of 2023. So this is a situation where we should start to see um, the benefits, if there are going to be any benefits of this agreement, perhaps not in the next one or two quarters, but certainly over the next three, four, five quarters, you start to get some, some feedback on, on what's actually happening with the business. So I'm going to go back to my original statement on the company. Financially, this is still a highly speculative business. They still have a lot to prove. There's still a lot that is unknown. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to analyze the commercial viability of the technology, because that is just simply unknown right now. I'm not an expert in the field. Even if you are an expert in the field, even if you're a world renowned expert in the field, it's still a very complicated and problematic endeavor to analyze and predict the commercial viability of a, of a complicated technology until it is actually commercialized. So we would consider XRO to be very speculative. This is not something that we would invest in right now. We would not consider it. Uh, an investment on a financial basis. Uh, what, what I can say, again, I will repeat that the commercial and financial potential of this company should be evident over the next several quarters, maybe, you know, certainly over the next three, four or five quarters. So this is something that investors, if they're interested in, and even us as well, we can watch closely. Right now, all we would do is watch, but there are a few, few things that we would want to see from this company at a very, very, very minimum before we would consider it investable for us. One, we want to see um, that based on their their the the deadline that they had made about production in Q3 of this year, we want to see that that commercial production has commenced. Um, we also want to see a signal that their deliveries to uh, Linamar are ramping up. So one thing that's important to note about their their agreement with Linamar is that there is no there is no guaranteed um, purchase of, of equipment or product from XRO. It's still subject to testing. It's still subject um, to other variables that Linamar has to confirm. So we want to see not just that those initial deliveries happen, but also we want to see over a couple of quarters that um, that the results that Linamar is getting from, the, from this technology um, encourage them to ramp up those deliveries. Maybe not even necessarily to the full 25,000 per year by 2027, that's a several-year time horizon as well, 
of course, that's going to take some time to see that. But just quarter over quarter, we want to see that those deliveries are increasing. We want to get some feedback from Linamar potentially. Um, but then we also want to see indications that 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 this contract has a potential to be profitable, that the company signs other contracts uh, with other companies as well. Um, indications that the margins are meaningful um, and that they can actually drive some net profit to the bottom line. So right now, this is one of the of the unknowns. They may be able to begin selling their product, but we know absolutely nothing about the margin profile um, or how profitable it's going to be on the, on the bottom line. In fact, very few financial details were actually provided with respect to the agreement that they have with Linamar. You can kind of piece some together, but there's a lot of uncertainties there. Um, Looking at the technology, especially if you're reading the company's presentation um, or looking at it from the perspective of the company, it certainly seems like there's a lot of potential there and there very well may be. And that's why I would be interested in watching closely. If there is potential there, then we should start to see that in, in the financial performance. Um, that is really the test. That is the validation of the business model. Now, you can do research on the company and the technology beforehand. And I have looked as well to see what type of third-party research is out there uh, in any industry journals or um, any other research provided by universities. I was not able to find anything myself. Does not mean that there is not something out there. Um, if anybody does know of this and they want to post a comment um, on, on our YouTube or send us a message, I will certainly take another look. But right now, you know, you basically have a pre-commercial product potentially about to be commercialized. So let's see what that commercialization looks like. And then we can actually make uh, an educated investment decision. If on the other hand, somebody wants to speculate beforehand um, and buy some shares, you know, you can certainly do that. Just understand there are still a lot of uncertainties in this company. Any purchase would just still be a speculation at this point. Uh, and we would we would say, keep keep those purchases at a minimum in terms of allocation in your portfolio at this time. <clears throat> yeah, it's a good summary on the business. I wanted to flip it around to the way we look at businesses because XRO was is a company that we've been asked on numerous times. We do a weekly chat session where you know our clients log in, ask us questions on any stock in North America. It has a, a promising potential product or products that could be used in this electrification boom that we're talking about and we have talked about with other recommendations in our portfolio. Now, I would juxtapose that with Hammond Power. Um, again, um, promising technology for XRO, uh, but we decided to invest in Hammond Power because um, it, ha it has a differing profile. Uh, it can also benefit from this electrification movement, the electrification boom. Um, but Hammond had an established product, was already selling it uh, with a strong balance sheet, uh, reasonable growth, which, and again, can take advantage of the electrification boom. Uh, if you, We re-recommended re Hammond Power at the start of 2020. It was earnings positive. It traded at low valuations. And we look for a five to 10 year growth path potentially ahead of the business at that time. Uh, electrification wasn't an absolute certainty, but it had been coming to the forefront of conversation. Now, XRO at that time, for example, XRO at the start of 2020 was trading around 420 in that range. Uh, so what has it done since that period of time? Again, promising technology, but it's down 46%. Uh, the NASDAQ composite itself is up 47% over that period. Hammond Power, which traded at low valuations, can benefit from the uh, the upcoming and potential, and what we've already seen, electrification boom. Well, it was trading at 760. It's trading at about 4650 today. So that's up 509% over that same period. So you got all of the speculative upside that you want in these smaller businesses that can uh, have exposure to a high growth, growth theme, but you got it with far less risk and you've got more upside. So that is typically what we're looking for is less risk with the same type of upside that you might want to look for in these more speculative companies. So that's what we're left with. Now you look at the two businesses today, 
from 2022 at the start or 2020 to the start where we are halfway through 2023. What do you have? Well, you still have Hammond Power with a growing business, trades at under 10 times earnings, low relative valuations with still that growth path ahead of us over the next three to five to 10 years through the electrification boom. Uh, But you go back to XRO, well, it's almost been cut in half in terms of share price over that time, but you're still looking at a business with just potential in front of you. You still don't have the sales. Maybe they're starting to come online now, but you know, if I had to buy one between the two, even after you've seen one go up 500% over that period, uh, you'd still more look at Hammond Power because of the, you know, how it fits our criteria in terms of profitability and still has upside to that, uh, the, to the theme that you're trying to play into. So hopefully that gives listeners a good idea of when we're looking at investment potential companies that we can look at for uh, investing in and recommending to our clients. That is kind of the math that we're doing and uh, the thesis behind why we invest in these, this company, Hammond Power, three, four years ago versus looking at XRO.